Hi there YouTube, thought I'd do a teardown of this uh, little USB audio mixer input output. It's a Zenix 302 USB. It's basically a, um, a USB uh, little tiny little audio mixer input output device for your computer. There's the USB port on the back. It's a good quality one. Um, it has microphone input, which can be XLR or 6.5mm quarter inch jack, or whatever you want to call it. Line in two track output for recording, main mix output, and then you've got your headphone and microphone, your phone level, your main mix level, clip signal LEDs. The signal is green and the clip lights up, they light up red. Um, and you've got your switches to, for your routing and stuff. Where do signals go where? This channel is basically a two channel mixer in essence. You can either take your line input from the USB or from the line in, which is kind of annoying, but I, it's not really a problem for where I'm, what I'm using it for at the moment. Um, and then you've got your microphone input, they have balanced and then high and low equalizers on them. So I'll take it apart and see what's inside. Let's go. It's all made out of nice, solid sheet metal. From, we can just do it there. Okay, so, here's the back of the board. It looks quite nice, actually. I'll see if I can get my camera to focus on that. There we go. It's a yellow solder mask with uh, with lots and lots of these little eight, eight pin uh, SOIC packages. I'm guessing they're all op amps. I'll have to look at the numbers. These bigger ones are EZDL. 052, whatever that is. Yeah, I think all they, all these are almost all ST parts. Once I can see, I'm not sure about this one over here. And that's not. That's some interesting parts up here. I'm not exactly sure what they are. They say, it says, um. Oh, yeah, they must be inductors, yeah, because they say L607, obviously. It's just an inductor package I haven't seen before, but. So lots of. There's a couple of mouth devices. Elf diodes mainly, um, and a few other bits and pieces. To take it apart any further, to take the top off the board, I think we have to remove these screws and these. So we'll see how we go. It's really good build quality, by the way. It's, it really looks. I'm not sure how good it looks on the camera, but it really looks quite nice. As I suspected, we will still have to uh, take off these pots. There we go. Okay, wow, okay. There's the inside of the uh, shell. And there's the board, which has got a lot of stuff on it. I'll turn it. Yeah, I'll let it focus up on that. So there's your pots, there's all your sliders. They do have a nice indent in the middle too. Um, yeah, I'm very impressed with the construction. Um, we have a big chip in the middle there, which says, that chip there, I'm going to try and read that now, is a PCM2902. I'll look all these parts up at the end and, and make another section, but I expect that is the uh, the USB interface chip. Um, the pots, 
I can't read the brand on the pots. The caps are made by Decon. Whoever they are, they have Decon caps. There's a slightly different one. There's one different cap. Oh no, there's a few different ones. Hang on. Maybe they're different values. Can't see the value on that one for looking. Oh yeah, there's a 10 marks in there. Yeah, okay. A um, couple of other inductors up here. Um, inductor there and there. There's your power LED on a nice standoff. There's a sticker here which says stuff. I'm not quite sure uh, what all the stuff means. It might mean something to someone. The screen there says um, Behringer P0ADV PCB 131031R Rev. I think that's Rev. It's either Rev 0 or Rev D. I think it's Rev 0. ROHS. Um, and there's even little things like here, here where it goes to ground. They've actually got a resistor there. Move out of the way. Um, if you can see there, there's a resistor there connecting the ground pad to the ground plane on the board. Oh yeah, and same up here. Same thing happening up here. There's a, I don't know if you can see the track actually goes across to it, but the, the track from that pad there does actually go across to there. And if you look on the bottom, yep, see from this pad, this is a good design. This is from this pad, there's a track point to it which winds all the way down to here and then is capacitively coupled to the ground plane of the board. I mean they've just absolutely covered this thing in thermal vias. Like just all over the place, through every little bit of ground plane. Yeah, so in, in, for these ground thingies there's um it's there's just this one I'll take it back a bit. This one here is resistive. Is resi goes to resistor to ground. This one goes to resistor to ground. And then on the back side, the one over this side goes to a capacitor to ground. So they've definitely not you know, skimped on the on the design and the detail and everything of all this. They're all you know, nice big electrodes and the switches feel good and clicky. Yeah, all the pots feel really nice and, and smooth, almost like they're oil filled. I don't know what brand they are, but I can't see a brand on any of them. But they look really nice. One thing I'm, I'm a bit curious about is on the pictures on the website of Faberinger, I could see in the pictures it says here, ne right above, right next to the mic in, it says Phantom Powered, right? Which I thought, oh yeah, so there's a little step-up converter in there. It gives you, you know, like 20 volts or something out. You know, some kind of voltage out just to drive your phantom powered mics. But nowhere in any documentation for it, the manual or nothing, I couldn't find. Or nothing, that was bad grammar. Or anything, I couldn't find any other mention of it apart from that I could see it on the actual thing in the pictures. Okay, I've been looking through the specifications here and it doesn't mention it anywhere. Nothing. No, that's just that's the English page of specs there. It's got quite, quite, quite a comprehensive list. Um, I'm really quite impressed with this manual. It's in like every language, but what I think I'm going to have to do is test it. Because I can now see on the board something rather interesting. There is now obviously you need inductors, I mean, inductors are quite common on a USB interface, um, but there's one there, right? No, that might be normal. Come on, there's one there, and there's one right down in there, that green one just in there. And so there's quite a few inductors all over this, as you expect with an audio product, but there's another one there, and there is an IC4 and a little SOP23-5 package there. So the only thing to do is to actually Power it on, put your multimeter probes on the connector and see if it's 48, well, I don't know, full, full 48 volts, but see if there's some phantom, phantom power available there. Okay, let's see what's on there. Okay, so from that pin, which looks like it's ground, because it's connected to the ground pin, we have to that pin, we have 
14.65 volts, look at that. That looks like enough to be fan and power. And the same to that pin, so that must be uh, hot and cold on your ground pins. And these other two are the ones for the colorance jack. 6.5, 6.35, whatever it is, millimeter jack. And that one says that one, so that they have no. But that. And that both have 14 point something volts on, so that looks pretty promising. Now I think that voltage and if you trace that back through all the traces here we get back to that point. Yep. From there, goodness knows. Uh, from there I don't know. Where was that cap? No, oh, yeah, that's that's that bigger cap in there. That bigger one that goes to that. So, but after that, I don't know where it goes. Just out of interest, that side of that edge of the board there, that this edge, has been V grooved or spe scored. It's all rough, and then this edge, on here, where it's all nice and smooth, has been routed. So that's just interesting. That's the only edge it has been routed on. The other sides are all V-snapped, V-scored, V-grooved. Now let's chip in here. It's a PCM, uh, what was it, PCM 2902 which is a stereo audio codec with USB interface, single ended analog input output and SPDIF so it's basically a USB codec chip yeah, so it's, it's pretty simple just ADC's DAX and the protocol control USB uh, protocol thing protocol chip basically um, power management is a suspend bin this is very very similar to the one that silicon chip used in there. It might even be the same one that silicon chip used in their USB audio interface a while back. Um, so you get your, your interface device endpoint, which it recognised by the really fast part. Right? This is Windows 7, 64-bit uh, uh, professional. Just because I can tell you that. Um, and it's and it, I plugged it in when installing. Done. It was really fast, easy. No drivers needed. Generic audio device. Um, it takes a 12 megahertz crystal apparently. One thing is interesting is all these, all, all of the the capacitors, just the capacitors, no other than any other through hole parts, just the capacitors. They yeah, all have the leads bent out like that. Hold them in, which is not uncommon. It's just interesting. It's just the capacitors. Does so something. The other interesting thing is you can see uh, into the tracks on the slider, it's open, it's an open slider and you can, you know one that you can actually see the individual tracks in there um, which is just kind of interesting um, apart from that there's just a lot of chips and a lot of capacitors but it's good to see they're using a lot of big nice capacitors Crystal has been soldered down there with a blob of solder, and generally I'm impressed with the construction. I can't see anything wrong with it. Um, I haven't found anything. Yeah, even the, the sliders, I got a little bit of oil on, on the tracks up the top there. Got a little bit of oil there. You can see it's shining there. Yeah, there's a, just a little smear of some kind of grease oil on there. So. And it looks like if you wanted to replace any of the parts, if one of these pots wore out, as long as you could find a replacement part, it uh, wouldn't be difficult to re-solder in. Because the top solder mask actually covers up the pad, the pads on the top. It's a double-sided board, but it's not soldered from the top, it's only soldered. Apart from the, apart from the surface mount components on the top, it's not soldered from the top, so it's really easy to replace components. So that pot, you would just have to unsolder it from the bottom. You wouldn't have need to do any fancy, fancy work to unsolder it. It would be pretty easy. Whoa! 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 I don't know if you can hear that. Listen to this. 
I put my finger on this area up here. It's still powered on, by the way. It's causing a frequency change in the in the step up boost regulator there, which is making it audible. Hmm. Which is interesting. Now, put it back together. Okay, it's back together. Let's see if it turns on still. Look at that. It still turns on. So, I'll turn that down. Um, so, yes, it does. definitely does work. Now, if we... Change it to going to main mix. You can see that it's... Uh, it's loading up the LEDs when it feels appropriate. As for audio quality, I mean... I mean, these headphones aren't that great, but um, in conjunction with my um, the, the amp that's sitting over there in the corner that I've um, done a, a tear down on the one I built, it's sitting over in the corner, and my Cambridge Audio speakers. The weak link is officially now my amplifier, even though it's a good silicon chip design. Apart from the fact that there's still some power supply noise induced over the USB port, into this. So thank you for checking out this teardown of the Zenix 302 USB audio mixer from Behringer and don't forget to subscribe.